Thus far, all of the transactions that we made onto the main Ethereum network have been done via services that offer their own user interface. But what if we want to send a transaction through code to the main Ethereum network without having to run our own node? Well, the easiest way to do this is with a service called Infura. Infura is a project underneath the umbrella of the Ethereum dev shop consensus, and it's incredibly easy to get started with. All you need to do is scroll down to this link that says sign up to get started today and fill out this form. That will take you to a page that looks something like this that has various API endpoints for you for the main Ethereum network, the test network, and IPFS as well. I'm just going to copy the link to the main Ethereum network. Now I'm going to open up my node console and notice that we don't even have an instance of test RPC running. We are going to connect our node console to the main Ethereum network. So let me star, store this endpoint in a variable called endpoint. And then I'm going to require my libraries. I'm going to require web3. And I'm going to require Ethereum JS TX as well. And now I'm going to instantiate a new instance of web3 by doing new web3, new web3.providers.http provider. But I'm going to pass in that Infura endpoint as the endpoint. And now I have my new web3 object connected to the Infura service. So I have an Ethereum account here, 2F2, that has two and a half Ether in it. And I'm going to send Ether to this account here, 0x99, that we've been sending Ether to in the previous video. So first, I'm going to make a couple of variables in my console, one for address one that we're going to be sending ether from and one for address two that we're going to be sending ether to. Now I'm going to define the raw transaction variable and notice that you don't actually need the private key of either account to actually generate the transaction data. You just need the private key to sign it. So I'm going to set the nonce equal to web 32 web 3get transaction count of adder one, because that's the address we're gonna be sending from. And then we're gonna send it to address two. The gas price that I'm going to use is whatever the current gas price is, which is about 21 billion way. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The gas limit is going to be 21,000 because that's exactly how much it costs to make a transaction. And then the value that I'm going to send is just going to be one ether. So web 3.2 hex, a web 3.2 way, one comma ether. And then the data will be blank on this and I can close the object. So I should now have a raw transaction object that I need to sign. So first I'm going to import the private key for the first address, which is this guy right here. And then I'm going to turn that into a buffer object by doing new buffer p key one in the hexadecimal format, which will give us something that looks like that. And then I can instantiate a new transaction object by doing new ftx raw tx. And then I will sign that transaction object with the buffer of the private key. And now I'm going to save a variable called serialized tx equal to 0x and then tx.serialize.toString hex. And now I have my serialized tx object. None of this should look unfamiliar to you because we've done this in a previous video. And we can now do web3.send raw, or I'm sorry, dot f dot send raw transaction, pass in the serialized tx, and we'll get a function that gives us either the error or data of the transaction. And then we'll just write, if there is not an error, then console.log the data. And if there is an error, then console.log the error. Yeah, and then that should work. And that does actually give us a TX hash. But this is now connected to Infura, so this should be connected to the main Ethereum network. So if I go and I paste in the TX ID, we see that this is actually a pending transaction that the main network of Ethereum has picked up. And if I go to this account that should be receiving it, we should see that it registered that it has a pending transaction. This registers that it has a transaction request to send Ether. And once this is mined, the Ether should show up in the account. And there we go. Now we have five Ether here. And we sent a transaction through code to the main Ethereum network. And all that we essentially had to do was set the provider to Infura. And notice that we never transacted the private key of that account to Infura. 
All that we did was sign the transaction locally and then send the raw transaction to Infura. So that is in no way compromising security, but gives us a nice workflow to send transactions without needing to DevOps our own node. I want to draw attention to another service called BlockCypher. BlockCypher offers a variety of APIs for interacting with both the Bitcoin and the Ethereum blockchain. And the level of abstraction that BlockCypher operates at is a little bit higher level than the raw RPC calls of Infura. So this gives us some interesting functionality around not only sending transactions, but also sending and querying Ethereum smart contracts. If you sign up for an account on BlockCypher, you can click sign up and it will give you an API token. And you can use this to query any of these different APIs. I'm going to show a really interesting thing BlockCypher lets you do, which is send Ethereum transactions from your command line using the curl command. So I'm just going to use the exact same raw transaction data that we were using before, but in order for the transaction to go through, I'm going to need to increment the nonce. So I can just object.assign a raw TX and overwrite the nonce property to be 0x2, which is 2 encoded in hexadecimal. So everything is the same, but I incremented the nonce. Now I'm going to need to sign this transaction by doing var tx equals new f tx of raw tx. And then I can tx.sign with p key 1x. And then I can tx.serialize dot two string hex to get the signed transaction data. Now I am going to copy this and then I'm going to go to my command line. I'm going to run the command curl dash SD and then pass it a object that has TX and then encodes the raw transaction data. And then I need to curl and send this curl request to the block cipher API right here with my token added. And if I hit enter, that will actually give me a object back and it should have a TX hash that I can now go to Etherscan and look up. So if I go here and put in the TX hash, I'll see that 10 seconds ago, somebody requested this transaction. And now if I go to my 0x99 account, I can see that my F balance is 5.9 or almost 6 Ether. Block Cypher uh, API worked perfectly.